Welcome to DevOps Interview Questions Part 2. I will show you some more questions and correct answers here with some silly mistakes. Do not do these silly mistakes during technical interview. Let's begin! Here are some DevOps interview questions for Freshers tips. Understand the core principles of DevOps. Familiarize yourself with CI, CD, automation, and monitoring for interviews. Gain hands-on experience with popular tools. Explore Git, Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes, and AWS tools. Using these tools in practice will provide concrete examples of your familiarity with the DevOps ecosystem. Practice coding and scripting skills. Gain proficiency in scripting languages like Bash, Python, or Ruby. Prepare for coding challenges and exhibit effective task automation abilities. Prepare for behavioral interview questions. Consider instances of teamwork or problem-solving challenges. Provide specific examples, showcasing your collaborative skills in a DevOps role. You should be aware of these all points. Stay up to date by regularly engaging with DevOps blogs, online communities, and forums. Discussing trends displays professional growth commitment. Practice mock interviews with peers or mentors. This practice improves responses and boosts interview confidence. Using these all tips, you would get success and be able to crack any interview. If you are a fresher DevOps engineer, then you may encounter some challenges like, as a fresher, your resume does not select, and it is not easy to get a job as a fresher. If your resume is selected, and during technical interview, you make lots of mistakes. My These All videos, about to point out, do not do silly mistakes during job interview. Okay, without wasting more time, let's start about DevOps interview questions for fresher with silly mistakes. I am starting this video from question no 11 because my last video contains questions one to 10. If you want to watch that video, then check above link or you will get link from description of this video. Question 11. What is the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment? Wrong answer is, continuous delivery and continuous deployment are exactly the same processes. Both involve automatically deploying every code change directly to production without any manual intervention. Mistakes are, continuous delivery and continuous deployment are not the same. They are similar, but have key differences. Continuous delivery involves ensuring that every change is deployable and ready for release at any time. But deployment to production may still require manual approval. Continuous deployment goes a step further by automatically deploying every change to production without any manual intervention. Correct answer to this question is continuous delivery, automates testing and preparation of code changes for release, but deployment still needs, manual approval, and continuous deployment, automatically deploys, code changes that pass automated tests to production. Question 12. How do you monitor and troubleshoot performance issues in a DevOps environment? Correct answer is, I use monitoring tools like Prometheus, Grafana, New Relic, and Datadog track system metrics and performance. Centralized logging with tools like the ELK stack means Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana, helps in analyzing application logs and identifying bottlenecks. Distributed tracing with tools like Jaeger or Zipkin helps track request flows across microservices to identify latency. Predefined thresholds triggering automated alerts for potential issues. General mistakes are people saying that restart services, but restarting services, without investigating the root cause, is a temporary fix and does not address underlying issues. Always remember, root cause analysis is crucial for long-term stability. Question 13. What is a blue-green deployment and why is it used? If you give answer like, this method is used, to ensure that the development and testing phases are separated, reducing the chances of bugs by keeping the two teams from interfering with each other's work, then this wrong answer because main mistakes are, in a blue-green deployment, two identical environments, blue and green, are used to reduce downtime and risk. One environment, blue, is live, while the other, green, is updated. 
traffic is switched to the updated environment once it's confirmed to be stable. The method is used to ensure a smooth transition with minimal downtime during deployment, not to separate development and testing phases. Correct answer of question 13 is, blue-green deployment involves two identical environments. Those are blue and green. Blue is the live production environment. Green is idle. The team deploys new code to the green environment. Upon successful testing, traffic is switched to green, making the new environment live. This strategy minimizes downtime and risk in deployments. Question 14. Explain the concept of shift left in DevOps. Mistakes of misunderstand concept is, shift left actually emphasizes the opposite, integrating testing and security early in the development process, not delaying them. The concept of shift left involves moving testing, security, and quality practices to earlier stages to catch issues sooner, rather than waiting until the end. That's why some people are not giving proper answer and address like wrong answer. Shift left in DevOps means delaying testing and security practices until the final stages of development. This approach ensures that testing is only done once all features are complete, allowing developers to focus solely on writing code without worrying about bugs or security issues early on. This is a wrong answer. The correct answer is, the shift left concept in DevOps refers to the practice of integrating testing, security, and other quality checks earlier in the software development lifecycle, instead of waiting until later stages, like post-development or pre-production. This helps in identifying and resolving issues early, reducing the cost and effort required to fix them. Question 15. What are some key metrics to track in a DevOps pipeline? In a DevOps pipeline, the key metrics to track are the number of lines of code written, the number of meetings held, and the amount of time developers spend coding. These metrics give a clear picture of productivity and help ensure that the pipeline is efficient. If you give this answer, then this is wrong. Because basics mistakes to understand concept is, the number of lines of code is not an effective measure of productivity or code quality. It's the impact and efficiency of the code that matter. The frequency of meetings is not a relevant metric for a DevOps pipeline. It's more important to focus on metrics that directly impact delivery and performance. Correct answer. Of question 15 is, key metrics to track are lead time for changes. That code commit to deployment time. Deployment frequency. That code deployment frequency. Failure rate is the percentage of deployments requiring remediation. MTTR is the average recovery time from a production failure. Code quality metrics include code coverage, defect density, and technical debt. DevOps interview questions with silly mistakes. Watch question 1 to 10. DevOps interview questions with silly mistakes and correct answers from my last video. Unnecessary, I do not make this so video lengthy. Stay connected for my other DevOps interview questions with general silly mistakes in next video. Kindly subscribe my this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and share this video to other people for knowledge sharing. Wish you all the best.